and welcome to our December edition of Our Sky Tonight at Home. A little planetarium show for you, virtually, and a safe way for us to enjoy the night sky together this month. So, uh, as you can see, things are a little bit different. I'm not in our dome to start out like I usually am. I'm actually uh, in our Discovery Lab studio that we're using to develop virtual field trips for uh, the next several months. So that's pretty exciting news as well. So tonight we'll be looking at all kinds of things in the night sky, some stars, some constellations, of course. But along with that, we'll be looking at uh, a conjunction of planets that will make it look like something that is known as the Christmas star. So we'll be looking at that as well, along with some good, cool information about the moon. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, to start out, we're going to allow the sun to set here. I started the time, the clock today, at about 2 o'clock this afternoon here on December 7th in Waldorf. And we can see the sun set to uh, the west, in the western sky. But what's interesting is just after sunset, you'll see uh, Jupiter and Saturn here really close to each other, right? And those are the two planets I was talking about coming into alignment later on in the month. All right, so keep your eyes on those as we go throughout some of the rest of the planetarium show. The other thing that we'll be talking about now as we move into the eastern sky is looking at the moon, all right? So the moon, uh, in this earlier part of the month, actually tonight and uh, is the closest point in the last several nights as well that we'll be able to see, where you can see that the moon was close to the constellation Leo, or Leo the Lion. Now, lions also tend to represent royalty, all right? And uh, so there's a star there called Regulus, all right? Kind of like the beagle for royalty. And so we can see the Regulus star is the brightest star in the Leo constellation. And it'll be pretty easy to find because the moon is very near it tonight. Um, and then maybe you saw it the past few nights as well. All right, so staying in the eastern sky, the next thing that we'll see, if we fast forward just a few days here uh, about the, to the 10th of the month, 10th of December, 10th, 11th, and 12th, in the very early morning hours, just before sunrise, you'll be able to see Venus and a very sliver of the crescent moon uh, very near each other. Again, this is in the eastern sky before sunrise. What's cool though is that you'll be able to see these things really, really cool and really well because Venus is already the brightest planet that we can see, right? And we have this very thin toenail crescent shaped moon, which sometimes it's hard to see, but because this is happening in the early morning hours, you'll get a little glimmer of that sunlight and it should be kind of a spectacular view as well. All right, again, that's the 10th and 11th and 12th or so, those mornings as we move throughout the rest of December. Now, by the 14th, though, that crescent moon, remember, a waning crescent means that it is the amount of light is getting smaller. So by the 14th of December, we actually won't be able to see the moon because the moon space will be a new moon where we can't see the moon all that much, right? So that will be our uh, new moon on December 14th. So now we're going to fast forward just a bit more. All right, fast forward a bit more to the 21st of December. So we're getting closer to Christmas, but what's really special about this day is that it is the winter solstice, the first day of winter. It's also the shortest day of the year, even here in Walworth. So what we can do is a kind of a scene is the, uh, we kind of set the sky looking for the south, all right, and allow the sun to start in the morning, around five o'clock in the morning, and then set, all right? So you can see the sun going all around me here, right? And it will set, and it doesn't go very high up in the sky, all right, you'll notice that. And we don't have that much daylight here in the winter. In fact, we only have about nine hours and 30 minutes, or nine and a half hours of daylight here in Walmart on the winter solstice. Compare that to the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, where we had almost 15 hours of daylight, all right? And here we, we get nine and a half. 
So we can see how the seasons change. And I have the summer solstice form as well. And you can see the sun not only uh, is in the sky longer, but goes higher up in the sky as well. So we get those really high sun angles. That's why in the winter, we don't have that. We end up with a lot of shadows uh, because the sun's lower in the sky, right? Both even for uh, all parts of the day. Now this part I'm so excited about, I managed to even turn myself into a little bit of a holiday elf, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, look, it's me, and I'm an elf. Well, hat and everything. Anyway, the point is, is that on December 21st, the winter solstice, another really cool thing is happening besides the winter solstice, and that is, is that we have some planets. You'll see Jupiter and Saturn, Two planets get really close to each other. They start out kind of far apart, and then they get closer and closer, right? They get closer and closer. And we call that a planetary conjunction. Say that for me. Planetary conjunction. That's right, you said it. Now, here's the, the, here's the thing about that, is it looks really cool. So, the planets get so close to each other, to our eyes here on Earth, they're not actually that close. They just look like it to our eyes here on Earth, right? And when it happens, they look really bright, like a very bright star. And because it's happening so close to Christmas on December 25th, right? This is December 21st. Some people are calling it the Christmas star. And this hasn't happened in about over 800 years, since the 1200s. So it's pretty cool that this is happening for us, right? And if you've been to one of my sky shows before in December, you've learned about what the Christmas star or Bethlehem star could have been from a scientific perspective. And one of the theories is that it was a planetary conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn, all right? Because there was a planetary conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn around the time of Christ's birth, right? So that's really cool, right? that we can see this planetary conjunction here for ourselves, all right? Well, I think, as cute as I am right now, I need to turn back into the human again. All right, all right, all right, here we go. The last thing we're going to do, that last two things, is our next full moon on December 29th, right? The last full moon, and uh, of December, right? It's also the last full moon of 2020 and even the last full moon of the decade, right? The last full moon of our decade uh, there on December 29th. Now another cool thing is that on New Year's Eve, December 31st, we'll be able to look at the star Ceres. It's the brightest star besides the sun in our sky and it always reaches its highest point in the sky right around midnight on December 31st to bring in New Year. It's sometimes referred to as the New Year's star. Way up there in the sky, the will leave look high up, right, on New Year's Eve, around midnight, all right? So it's a way of celebrating the New Year using stars and science. Well, happy New Year and happy holidays to all of you. Uh, thank you for joining us again for another one of our at-home planetarium shows. We cannot wait until it is safe for you to be back in our actual planetarium. Until then, have a good one.